Dear students, today we will continue the lesson from where we stopped last day. And before that, let me just quickly recap the things we learned till now. So this lesson is written by Jerome G. Jerome and this is a real life incident that happened in his life. So Jerome along with his two friends, George and Harris, they decided for a trip. And Jerome was indulged in doing the packing. By the time his friends George and Harris they were sitting there idly and uh, Jerome was getting so much irritated seeing their idleness. So they later on George and Harris they told that they will pack the hampers and they were doing doing the same work but while they were doing they were making immense blunders. They were just indulged in brainless activities and uh, Jerome was thinking what absurdity are they? doing so now we can go with the 10th paragraph they upset salt over everything and as for the butter i never saw two men do more with one and two pence worth of butter in my whole life than they did after george had got it off his slipper they tried to put it in the kettle it wouldn't go in and what was in wouldn't come out they did scrape it out at last and put it down on a chair and had it sat on it and it stuck to him and they went looking for it all over the room so here we can see two things have been done by them first thing they just up, uh, upset salt over everything upset means overturned they just overturned salt over everything next thing they made a blender with a piece of butter with a small piece of butter first thing they just put it down and it just got stick to the slippers of George then they tried to put that in a kettle but it was not going inside the kettle and later they were unable to take it properly then what they have done they did scrape it from the kettle scrape it means they were just pulling they were just dragging it from the kettle and then they put that on a chair then they put the piece of butter on a chair and what Harris has done without noticing that George has put that on the butter had is just sat on it and the butter stuck to him and they was just searching for this piece of butter the whole room i will take my oath i put it down on the chair said george staring at the empty seat i saw you do it myself not a minute ago said harris then they started round the room again looking for it and then they met again in the center and stared at one another so here George is saying that I am just making an oath, I am just promising you, I am swearing you that I just put that butt on that chair and now it is not there. And they were just searching all around the room and again they met the same point, they were unable to find it out. Most extraordinary thing I ever heard of, said George, so mysterious, said Harris. Then George got round to the back of Harris and saw it. Why, here it is all the time, he exclaimed indignantly. Where? cried Harris, spinning round. Stand still, can't you? roared George, flying after him. So they were just searching all around the room. And by the way, George just turned back. Okay? And uh, he just came to see it was just sticking on the back of Harris and uh, he is just exclaiming here it is all the time the butter was here only and he was just exclaiming in indignant way indignant means in a manner indicating anger at something perceived as unfair okay so he was just crying oh god it was here only it was tucking on your back and and now we can see a new character in this lesson that is a dog the pet dog of Jerome K. Jerome and his name is Montmorency. Montmorency. Montmorency was in it all, of course. Montmorency's ambition in life is to get in the way and be sawn at. If he can swim in anywhere where he particularly is not wanted and be a perfect nuisance and make people mad and have things thrown at his head, then he feels his day has not been wasted. So here we can see a pet dog 
and his name is Montmorency that is a pet dog of Jerome and his habit is that he just want to make nuisance to everyone he just want to get scolded and he just wanted to disturb everyone okay Montmorency's ambition in life is to get in the way and be sought at means he he always wanted to get scolded by someone and if he can swim in anywhere swim means to twist one's body where he particularly is not wanted and be perfect nuisance and make people mad he just want to make the people mad and have things thrown at his head then he feels his day has not been wasted he used to get happiness when he is being scolded he is being just uh, he is making some nuisance to someone he j- he used to get happiness to get somebody to stumble over him and curse him steadily for an hour is his highest aim and object and when he has succeeded in accomplishing this his conceit becomes quite unbearable so here comes the actual nature of this dog he just want to disturb everyone in every sense he want to uh, he want someone to stumble over him stumble over him he means to trip over a hurdle if someone is thinking that he is a hurdle if someone is falling only because of him and when he is been scolded by them for an hour he used to feel happy and he used to feel that he has done his work for the day and he used to feel pride about himself he came and sat down on things just when they were wanted to be packed and he labored under the fixed belief that whenever harris or george reached out their hand for anything it was his cold damp nose that they wanted he put his leg into the jam and he worried the teaspoons and he pretended that the lemons were rats and got into the hamper and killed three of them before harris could land him with the frying pan so here we can see what all activities were done by the dog whenever they were about to pack something he just used to disturb them and when um, harris or george is searching for something he used to feel that they are reaching out for the things to be packed they were reaching out for his cold wet nose and would bring it forward for them and he he just um, interpreted in, interrupted in the uh, packing section also and he just thought that the lemons were the rats and he just got into the hamper and killed three of them means he just smashed three of the lemons till the time harris has bought a frying pan just to give him a beat okay so here we had seen what all noises were created by the pet dog and uh, Harris said I encourage him I didn't encourage him a dog like that doesn't want any encouragement it is a natural original sin that is born in him that makes him do things like that so here the Har- um, the dog has created many noises and Harris is blaming Jerome for this activities he told that he encouraged him Jerome encouraged the dog but Jerome tells that I hasn't encouraged the dog the dog is born like this no need for any encouragement it is a natural original sin of this dog the packing was done at 12:50 and harry sat on the big hamper and said he hoped nothing would be found broken george said if anything was broken it was broken which reflection seemed to comfort him he also said he was ready for bed we were all ready for bed harry was to sleep with us that night and we went upstairs so now the packing session is all over they have done it by 12:50 pm and harris just sat on the big hamper and told he just hoped that nothing is going to break but um, george said if anything is breaking it just leave it and think that it is already broken just to give a comfort to george no harris and he also said that he is ready to go for the bed and we all were ready we means harris george and jerome they were ready to go for bed and harris decided that they, he will sleep with them and they went upstairs we tossed for beds and harris had to sleep with me he said do you prefer the inside or the outside j i said i generally prefer to sleep inside a bed harris said it was old george said 
what time shall i wake you fellows harry said seven i said no six because i wanted to write some letters harry and i had a bit of row over it but at last split the difference and and say half past six so now they just reached the bed and um, they were just tossing for bed tossing means throw something somewhere lightly or casually just to arrange the bed okay and harris asked to jerome whether you want to uh, sleep inside or outside the bed and jerome was just cracking a joke he said i prefer to sleep inside a bed j means jerome okay and um, now george asked them which time we have to wake up and harry said seven but jerome said six and they were just having a word on it a bit of row over it means an argument they were having an argument and at last they decided that they will wake up by half past six means six thirty wake us at six thirty george we said so george to george they asked harry and uh, jerome they told that wake us make make us wake up at 6:30 george made no answer and we found on going over that he had been asleep for some time so we placed a bath where he could tumble into it on getting out in the morning and went to bed ourselves so they were just waiting for the reply of george but george hasn't replied because already he has he was asleep so what they have done harris and jerome made a mischief by placing the bathtub next to J- george bed so that he would fall into out as he woke up on the pretend that this way he would take a bath as soon as he got up so this is all about the lesson just a fun activity among the friends they were doing it seriously but ultimately all result in a very absurdity so i hope you understood the meaning of the lesson and um, read the lesson thoroughly thank you